everybody, it's Kay Beast, and for this week's video I'm continuing with my Beginner's Artist Alley series. If you've missed any of the previous videos, I'm going to be doing my very first Artist Alley on June 23rd at the Nashville Library Comic Fest. It's from 12 to 7 in Nashville, New Hampshire at their public library. So if you're in the New England or New Hampshire area, please come check it out. Come say hello and support me. That would be really great. The convention is free to attend and there's going to be some panels and a bunch of other activities and a, a good sized Artist Alley for a library. I think I saw about 20 other names listed when they announced who was going to be there. So it, it's a fun little thing. Come check it out. So my first video was about online resources and how I did research into what I needed for my first Artist Alley and also where I found my convention. My second video was about table supplies. It was things that I bought for my table display and for storage. For this week's video, I'm going to be talking about the merchandise that I ordered, how I prepped my files, where I ordered from, and how everything turned out. So going in, I knew that I wanted to print art prints, buttons, and business cards. I also wound up having stickers made, but that wasn't planned. It just a great sale happened and I took advantage of it. So I'll go into that as well. So after deciding what I was going to have made, I used the online resources that I mentioned in the first video to do some research into different printers. I looked at recommendations from other artists and eventually narrowed it down to a few options. Before I actually had orders made, I requested free paper samples from both printers, which they both provided. For my business cards, I used gotprint.com. A lot of people use Vistaprint and Moo.com, which I've heard are great, but the pricing for what I was looking for actually wound up being cheaper for Gotprint. So I went with them, I requested a free paper sample set from them, and they sent a sample of everything. They sent a lot of stuff. I didn't keep everything because I'm only using them for business cards, but getting that sample in helped me decide what kind of paper I wanted. So I knew that I wanted a business card that felt a little sturdy but not too heavy. So after getting Got Print samples in, I wound up going with a 16 point dull cover with a matte finish and I wanted the rounded corners because I just like how they look. So the actual website has templates available for different their different sizes of product because they have a lot and I downloaded the template for the particular size that I was doing. I did the standard business card size with the rounded corners vertical because I knew which artwork I was going to use on the back and then I fit my artwork into the template and also set up a very basic front side with basically my social media and I picked a color that sort of matched the artwork itself. I haven't really decided on like a set palette of colors for my business yet. So rather than try to come up with a color scheme in a limited time to sort of fit my branding, instead I went with a color that matched the artwork because I just like it. I just like how it looks better on the card myself. So I went with Lion on the back because Lion is one of my favorite pieces that I completed. I have my social media on the other side. It's very basic. I ordered a hundred of them. I got them in about two weeks and that includes printing and shipping time. I live in Massachusetts and they shipped from California. I didn't choose expedited shipping. I, I picked the cheapest shipping price available because I ordered them way in advance. So I was in no hurry and I was, wanted to save money. And with the shipping and the what I and the slightly higher quality cardstock that I got, it was about 20 bucks. So that's pretty good for a hundred cards. So yeah, they're really good and they send paper samples. So if you're looking to get business cards made, I recommend you check them out, see what the samples are like, and go from there. But Got Print is, is a good place to go. And I will have links to everything in the description below, obviously, for what I used. So the next thing that I had made were pinback buttons. I got the round 1.25 inch buttons made. I picked that size because it was a size that I like. I have a few hanging up on my rainbow flag back there. It's a decent size and it's pretty cheap compared to other ones and pretty much everybody makes them and I figured these would be very easy to find. So I don't have my own button maker, although I may want to get one someday. So instead I had to go and find a place online to make the buttons for me and then ship them out here. So there's a lot of different places that I found through my research that have that can make buttons. There's places on Etsy and then there's places listed on some of the other websites that I used. So I went through different websites to try to figure out how much it would cost to have buttons made. Did they have a minimum order quantity because that's something I'm worried about. It's a small convention. I didn't want to have to bring like a hundred buttons. So eventually I narrowed it down to wackybuttons.com. I picked them because they didn't have a minimum order quantity. I could order one button if I wanted to which worked for me because again, really small convention, very first convention I'm ever doing. I don't want to buy a whole bunch. Their 1.25 inch round buttons are about 55 cents each. Price goes down when you start ordering more. 
I imagine when ordering large quantities, it's probably cheaper to go elsewhere. But again, because I was getting so few, I needed something easy. So I went with them. They have templates you can download. So I downloaded that template, opened it in Photoshop, and then took a few of my art prints. I basically went through the art that I was willing to sell and make into merch. And I separated them into different merch categories. I didn't want to have a lot of repeating images and different things. So once I just settled on the ones that I knew I was going to use for the buttons, I put them into the template until they fit. The template itself accommodates for the bleed and the trim. So when the button actually gets made, the part that folds underneath, they have that marked out. So I made sure that my artwork fit that perfectly. Again, I'm using Lion as a reference because it's the one that I used on almost everything. So why not? Wackybuttons.com has different ways that you can get art made. You can email them. You can upload the image yourself. You can, you can upload a file and then arrange it on the actual button template on their website. But I wanted to use Photoshop so I could play around with the levels and stuff. So once I submitted my images, they came back with approval and sh and like a, a mock-up of what it would look like on the button as well as a code that I could use so that I could actually order reorder in the future. So after I did that, I ordered one of each image. It was basically my own hard copy proof because they don't provide that, but at 55 cents a button, it worked out. Once those came in, I liked how they looked. So then I ordered my full set. I got five of each this time, so I have a total of six each made my little display, which you saw in the last video, and it was basically good to go. The buttons are pretty good quality. I like the way they printed. I was concerned about the actual colors when I sent my orders for everything, because when you get things printed, colors tend to look a little darker than they do on screen because you're dealing with a backlight situation. But from nowhere that I got things printed did I have that issue where colors looked weird. So I was very pleased about that. I don't know if that's something that they do or whether or not I was really good about compensating for that. Either way, I was very pleased with the, with the actual quality of all the products I got. The buttons feel very secure. The, the back doesn't feel like it's gonna come off or anything. So I'm very happy with them and I'm definitely gonna order from them again. And as a little bonus, which I didn't realize, Wacky Buttons ships out from East Rochester, New York. It's either East Rochester or Rochester. It's somewhere right around, right around there, which is very close to me. So I had them in two days when their estimated shipping time was about nine days, but I'm in Western Mass and the area that they ship from is a three hour drive from here. So I had my stuff very quickly, which is a bonus because I wound up picking a supplier that was near me. I didn't realize that until they shipped. So yeah. So the stickers that I got made were by Sticker Mule. That was not planned. It just kind of happened. I'm on a Discord group with a bunch of other artists and and Claire from Black Summer Coloring found a link to a deal where you could get 50 die cut stickers for $9 and they usually run for 70. It was for the three by three inch ones. She sent the link to the Discord group and, and let us know about it and I decided to jump in on it because it was $9 for 50 stickers, which was a really good deal. So, so I downloaded a template from stickermule.com and then decided to turn Lion into a sticker because why not? I'm using Lion on everything anyway. Cleaned it up, sent it over to Sticker Mule. They sent me an online proof. When I approved it, they had them made and I got them within four days. That includes printing and shipping. Like I had them very quick. They're vinyl stickers. They're about 2.5 by three inches, I believe, because the it wound up being a little narrow. And they're very good quality. The print quality was really good. And again, I got them on sale for $9. Their original price for that many is between 60 and $70 based on the size of the actual sticker, which again, isn't bad if you're getting 50 of them. The actual website, their minimum quantity looks like it's 50, but if you put that into your cart and change the quantity, you can get as few as 10 stickers if you want. So that's really good. You don't have to buy in bulk necessarily. So I definitely think I'm gonna use them again, but probably not immediately. I've been looking out for more deals, but I haven't seen any. So that was mostly just a good opportunity for me to jump on. And I figured why not more merch for the convention, right? So the last thing that I got made were art prints. I went with five by sevens and 11 by 17s. I'm going to avoid making prints that are international paper sizes like A3s and stuff, because in the United States, it's extremely difficult to find frames that fit prints of that size. I have a few from conventions I've been to and I had to get larger frames and get the prints matted. I did that myself because I went to art school and know how to map pictures, but not everybody does and getting them professionally framed and matted isn't cheap. So I want to make, my prints more accessible. So I'm sticking with basically standard photo sizes and 
basically any sort of paper size that you can easily find a frame at Walmart is kind of what my goal is basically. So yeah, so I wanted a small print size and I wanted a big one. So for my prints, I wound up using Cat Print. They were the most recommended printing site on all the resources that I use. They have no minimum order quantity, which is fantastic because sometimes you don't need 50, you just want like two. So it's great. They have a lot of different options available. They have a lot of different kinds of paper, including specialty papers, a lot of different sizes that you can get. So I requested a free paper sample from them, which you'll see here, and they have a lot of different options available and I was very happy with the set. The paper sample is listed as being free. They don't charge you for it, but I wound up having to pay postage on it and I think that's because in January, the US Postal Service changed the way they charge certain things being sent. Catprint sent the actual sample in a simple envelope and the US Postal Service charges those as parcels now, not as letters because of the way the paper is sized or whatever. So that's a recent change and I don't know if they've actually adjusted the way they send out those free samples or not. So if you do request a free sample in the United States, you might have to pay postage, but it wound up being like $2. So it's not really a big deal. Again, it depends on where you're from. I'm in Massachusetts in Western Mass and Cat Print is in Northern New York. So it didn't have to travel far to get to me. So, you know, just bear in mind, you might have to pay postage. So after getting the paper samples in, I basically narrowed it down to two or three different ones that I liked. And then I went to the free price quote thing to figure out how much it would cost for me to get the amount of prints that I wanted. I used five images for each size and I got five copies of each ordered. So once I figured out which one was more cost effective, I went with that. I wound up using their light cardstock and I wound up using the matte finish because all my artwork is done traditionally. And I like the way traditional artwork looks with a matte finish more than glossy. It just looks a little better to me. So that's what I went with. The cat print offers free hard copy proofs, which I requested. And it's a very good thing that I did because it turns out I did not clean up one of my digital files as well as I thought I did. And I didn't notice it on my little laptop, but when it was blown up on 11 by 17, it was very obvious. So that's a discount print. <laughs> and I had to send them a new file. So oopsie. So the way they packaged everything was great and it comes in this really sturdy box. It was filled to the brim with packing peanuts, but they're recyclable and they also melt in water, which was amazing. I had a little too much fun testing that, playing with that myself, but I'm actually going to be using those boxes to store my prints when I'm traveling anyway, because it fits perfectly anyway. And I actually wound up putting a whole bunch of my other convention stuff on top of them because I didn't order that many prints. So the box was not full up and it just wound up working really well. So despite using the exact same paper for both sizes, they both turned out fantastic. The 11 by 17 doesn't feel too flimsy with the lighter cardstock and the five by seven doesn't feel too firm. It's pretty much a perfect balance and I'm really happy with how they turned out. So again, something that I was concerned about with getting something printed was whether the color balance and the brightness would be off, but I had no issues with these either. So I was very pleased with the quality and the result of my prints. I ordered five copies of each one, but Cat Print actually wound up sending me a few extra copies of all of them actually, which was pretty great. That might have something to do with the cutting process of the smaller ones, I don't know, but I got bonus prints for at no cost, which is apparently something that just happens sometimes according to other people online, so that was great. So if you're interested in using Cat Print, I do have a referral code. And when you sign up on Cat Print, everybody gets one you can, that you can share with your friends. And I believe it's for $10 off of an order. So if I can find it, I will post a link to it in the description below if you wanna use it. And then the final thing that I needed to get for all of my merch was packaging. I used clearbags.com and got those plastic sleeves that everybody uses. It's a great website. I've had the bookmark for years. It's really affordable. You get a lot of bags for very cheap. So I bought three sizes of bags. I bought ones that fit my 11 by 17s. I bought some that fit my five by sevens. I also bought some that were big enough for my nine by 12s because that's the size of paper I used for my originals. It's a nice medium size. And I actually use that to package a lot of the original Inktober pieces that I'm selling as well. The last bit of merch that I have to sell are a bunch of original pieces. I have some original paintings and frames. I have some of those Pokemon starter things I did last month. And I have some Inktober drawings from the past few years of doing Inktober. So I think that about does it for this week's video. Again, I will have links in the description below for every website that I mentioned, the referral code to cat print, as well as a link to the convention that I'm going to. Again, which is the National Library Comic Fest on June 23rd from 12 to 7 in Nashua, New Hampshire. So yeah, the next week's video is going to be a little demo of my table display. If I can figure out how to do it, I'm going to be house sitting at a friend's house during that week. And I don't know if he has a table that's large enough, but I'll make do with what's available and kind of show you how I plan to set things up. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.